We're also counting down to the midterm election three weeks from today and the crucial Senate race in New Hampshire. CNN's chief political analyst, Gloria Borger, has a closer look at attempts to unify the Republican Party after the primaries. New Hampshire, home to the first presidential primaries. And now... Get me in the Senate. Home to a crucial Senate race, attracting voters with fiercely held views. I mean, who doesn't want to make America great? That's the goal, of course. But watching Republicans try to unify this election season is like watching a bunch of arranged marriages. In New Hampshire, between a more conventional and successful incumbent governor with a Senate candidate calling for a new breed of party outsiders. So what would you call yourselves? We're patriots, right? We're, we're a new ilk of the Republican Party. That's retired Brigadier General Don Bolduc, who served 10 tours in Afghanistan and narrowly won a packed primary as a border-protecting and election-denying conservative, once opposed by the Republican establishment. The establishment has become the problem, and people want a solution to that. So what exactly is the Republican problem? They're not audacious enough. They're not aggressive enough. Trump was like a hand grenade thrown into the Republican Party. Love him or hate him, right. he definitely changed things up. Bolduc was not endorsed by Trump. He's an underdog in this race against former governor and one-term senator, Democrat Maggie Hassan. She's talking a lot about abortion politics. He's talking a lot about the economy and immigration. Will you vote and support the southern border? <laughs> yeah, baby. And he's getting a lot of money from a political action committee aligned with Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell, the ultimate insider and not a Bolduc favorite. His PAC has given you $23 million. Well, and thank you very much. And yet, the self-proclaimed change candidate seems unchanged. I want leadership to change in the United States Leadership, Senate. but... I want it to change. Bolduc is among a large chorus of Republican right-wing warriors who now find themselves welcoming both money and newfound support from the very party poobahs they once dismissed. He's a Chinese communist sympathizer. That was about the popular governor Chris Sununu, seeking his fourth term, who had no kinder words for Bolduc. Kind of a conspiracy theorist type, type candidate. But post-primary, an embrace and a nod from the governor. He's an, an amazing individual with this background, this war hero background, that just wants to stand up and serve. And now needs to reach out beyond his conservative base. New Hampshire is an ornery state. There are more independents than there are members of either party in New Hampshire. As, so go, as the independents go, so goes New Hampshire. And so a Bolduc switch on the legitimacy of the 2020 election. From this... So I signed a letter with 120 other generals and admirals saying that Trump won the election, and damn it, I stand by my election. To this. So you believe the election was not stolen? Not stolen, but irregularities and fraud. The state Republican Party chairman says it's all for the greater good. If we are going to change the direction of this country, you have to support our entire Republican ticket. Because if you don't, the Democrats win, and the direction of the country doesn't change. Unity at all costs, not only in New Hampshire. Consider Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin's support for election denier Kerry Lake. The Republican Party has to be a party where we are not shunning people. What Arizona deserves is a Republican governor. Bolduc supporter Paul Grant hopes the harmony lasts. I think Republicans sometimes are amateur when it comes to politics, and by that I mean I don't agree with a lot of the, the policies or stances of the Democratic Party, but they play to win. They do. They, they stick together. There's just one small problem on the horizon. It'd be one thing to say that the Republican Party's not just a big tent, it's a big tent with a bar fight. And it's not about to reach last call anytime soon. So, Gloria, how are voters reacting to these big swings we're seeing from these candidates? Well, Republican voters in New Hampshire, for example, I was asking them about, well, he was uh, an election denier, said it was rigged. Now he says it wasn't rigged. What do you think? You know what they're saying? That's fine. He changed his mind. He looked, he looked at uh, the numbers and he changed his mind. The big question in New Hampshire is how are independent voters going to see this? Are they going to see him just as pandering 
to independent voters, and we don't really know the answer to that. You'll have to see that in the election in New Hampshire. But as people uh, change their minds, Republicans are saying, you know, these were tough primaries. People disagree in tough primaries. But this is such a basic question. You have to wonder how independent voters are going to look at it. And of course, Democrats, we're not going to vote for Don Baldock anyway, right? Gloria, stand by. I'm going to continue this conversation. I also want to bring in CNN's Audie Cornish as well. Audie, you heard Gloria liken a Republican efforts to unify uh, to a bunch of what she called arranged marriages right now. Uh, how do you expect we'll see all this, this theme play out as we approach the midterms in three weeks? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want to slander arranged marriages like that, which is an evolve a uh, level of respect, I think, in those parties coming together. But I do think it, it was very smart, Gloria, to have this story set in New Hampshire. I recall another Senate race that was a tipping and turning point for Republicans, which was Scott Brown. And, and the Tea Party kind of coming to the forefront. We're now at a new era for the Republican Party. And a, a second reason for it to be good set in, in New Hampshire is the end of the Yankee Republican. This kind, there's a certain kind of Republican figure. Liz Cheney's another example of it. That is going away. And I think the embrace of that kind, the new type figure in a place like New Hampshire is uh, sort of heralding this new era where the Marjorie Taylor Greens, et cetera, um, have a kind of primacy in the party. You know, the interesting thing is in New Hampshire is that the Republicans' uh, establishment, if you will, didn't want Bolduc. It was a big primary, and they endorsed someone else who was a more establishment candidate, and that candidate didn't win. So the moment that happened, the greater good is, of course, control of the Senate. And that is the goal. And so you see a very popular governor like Chris Sununu, who's up for his fourth term, uh, embracing him and saying, you know what? He's a, he's a veteran. He's, he really just wants to stand up and serve. That was not what he was saying during the primary. But these are also the calculations that you saw voters say, uh, say white evangelical voters make when it came to supporting Trump. The idea of the imperfect messenger, the idea That's of, right. hey, it's just fine if we, if we get what we want in the end. Um, and you could say for those voters, for instance, who are pro-life, they do feel like they have uh, they, they had a successful time with a Trump presidency, and I think there's a lot of other voters within the Republican Party that are making that same calculation. And it's interesting, Gloria. Today we heard uh, President Biden clearly count on trying to galvanize Democrats yeah. yep. around the uh, country around the issue of abortion rights for women. But polling shows voters are much more concerned right now about the economy and some other issues. Look at these poll numbers right there. Uh, they're, they're much more concerned about the economy and inflation than they are about abortion or immigration or crime. So what do you make of that? Well, look, I, I think what the president was trying to do today is remind people, as he put it, you know, how they felt the day of the Dobbs decision. He was trying to make it front and center because we know that when it was front and center, there was a huge reaction to it. And he's also trying to change the subject. You know, he doesn't want this election to be about the things that people are so worried about inflation and the economy. He wants to talk about the Dobbs decision. He wants to talk about Republicans as extremists, which that's what Democrats are saying. So he wants to kind of, you know, whoever defines the election is going to win the election. And so he's trying to define it away from himself and towards these other things, obviously. Tomorrow he'll be de delivering a big speech on gas prices what to do about that and inflation as well. And remind uh, people, no doubt, that he brought gas prices down, right? Yeah, he'll remind people of that. 